right. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Tech Talk with Terry and Elizabeth. Um, I'm Terry Samuels and my gorgeous partner wife, Elizabeth. Um, this is a, a weekly thing that we do on Mondays. So um, like everything, like, share, do all the stuff so you can uh, follow us on what we do with this thing. Um, today, um, we have one of our dear friends and one of the, I, I say one of the top people in our industry, Mr. Clint Butler. Um, oh, great. <laughs> So we're going to talk a little. We're going to talk to Clint a little bit and talk a little bit about what what's coming up here in the next month. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, any comments, anything, just please put them in the in the different channels, and then we'd be glad to get to them and answer them for you. So, anyways, Elizabeth, how are you? I'm good. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when we were thinking right when we picked this day to do our weekly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, especially Monday morning, it's like okay, uh, but no, it's all good. So I'll tell you why I picked it, and then maybe it'll resonate with you guys. Mondays, I I just hate Mondays. I don't, whether it's in my head or whatever, I just don't like Mondays. So the easiest thing to do on a Mondays is to hold a show and have a conversation. That's, so that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I, I agree. When I was doing my podcast, the only thing I did on Mondays was my shows. <laughs> exactly. Are you doing that anymore? Uh, well, with Kim's cancer, I just got overwhelmed with everything, and yeah. so I, I just stopped doing. That. I do the AMA with the SEO Intel folks, but we don't, don't do that until one. Okay. So, so speaking, of which is how is Kimberly? Good. All the radiation is done. She's got to wait a month to see what it did. Uh, and then she starts her, it's a year long set of chemo, one week every month for 11 months. Wow. She'll be on chemo for so. But, and you but, guys, and you guys yeah. can still do that down there in Yuma. You don't have to travel to do any of that. Yeah, it's all in the house, like pills. She's taking, she takes oh, okay. pills. There's no injections and stuff. Something about oh, the blood brain barrier it didn't make any sense to me, but okay. Well, of course, our prayers and anything you guys need, we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Skylar. How are you? Skylar's from the south now, since he's saying y'all. Y'all, morning, y'all. <laughs> All right, so tell us what's been going on, Clint. You know, it's been a been a couple months. I mean, besides you know all the stuff that's going on, um, are you doing much with AI nowadays? Are you doing much with you know plan getting in those rabbit holes? Well, you know Mark uh, from HOH, and he's mm -hmm. gone full crazy with the AI prompting stuff that he was doing, um, all based off of uh, stun spot prompting that discord group so mm -hmm. i've been you know just kind of actually just following his lead in regards to what um what's going on with ai really um and and frankly it's, it's really just because 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 i stopped the youtube channel my lead intake is down like significantly mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but that's actually created some opportunities where I just follow in Mark's lead and what he's doing with prompting and just using his prompting and then creating websites with it. Uh, that and Andrew Ainsley's uh, content sprout. Yeah. Those yeah, two that's a, that's a pretty cool tool. That's, yeah. yeah. It's okay. good. And InLinks is stepping up really good on their, on their, um, they have a content generator in there too. So it creates outline and then, you know, on most of the tools, it creates outline and you it's kind of like you got to use all of it or none of it. Uh, InLinks is different. It creates the outline and then says, here's what we'll write about in these separate boxes. And then you just select the boxes and it spits out the sections. So I've right been doing um, local landing pages with it and it's really, it's been working pretty good. That's cool. Awesome. Have you played with Zitsta very, very much? Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, I, I use that full disclosure. He's my business partner. So, um, in rank year. <laughs> um, so I do have free access to it. It's not mine. We don't share that business, but he gave me free access to it. Um, and it's, I, I like it because the one, the topical relevance thing that he remade, if you guys don't know, he bought topicalrelevance.com from yeah. Joe Priest. 
and then talked to me and then made some refinements and stuff and some stuff he saw like Jesper doing in his knockoff tool uh, as well. Um, so the Entity Explorer itself is worth the subscription if I was paying for it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I love it. I was playing with it this weekend. Um, it's pretty freaking cool. Um, and that's and the biggest not thing. not a paid sponsor. <laughs> yeah, and I am not. Yeah, no, I'm not a paid sponsor at all. So um, I just, you know, I obviously use topical relevance on a daily basis back when it was that. And then I, I knew he'd bought it. I knew he'd done some stuff with it and then added it to other stuff. And But I never really found out too much about it. And I reached out to him. He said, here, yeah, yeah, go play with it. And so we got a we got a pretty good subscription, and then obviously I wanted something to sell in our class and or to you know promote in our class something that was an all around tool, yeah, um, for content. And I, that's why I really like that one. Is and they're all getting to be pretty cool. They're all getting to be, you know, um, just obviously leaps and bounds of what we were doing a year ago. <laughs> yeah. just, you know, I had that question asked the last time I had a, con um, a podcast. A guy asked me, he goes, "What's the difference between now and a year ago?" And I was like content that's you know we're no longer ordering content and paying 15 bucks for you know 700 words and <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, or seven bucks an eye writer for some junk that skylar could write exactly <laughs> <laughs> i just think that uh, gotcha skylar <laughs> so, that was awesome so um so tell us about SEO Rockstar is coming up in, well, yeah, basically a month. Um, yeah, I think we're at 30 days now. I didn't check this morning. I haven't made my my daily post to annoy my social followers, but I think we're at 30 days. November 4th uh, is VIP day. Um, mm -hmm. For right now, what we have uh, pretty well locked in is we're taking everyone out on ATVs uh, in the morning. And then we're probably just going to do the whole standard let's go drink um, in the afternoon, just, you know, to be fair of what, what to expect. Um, the value of the VIP day is really just you get one-on-one -on -one conversations with speakers and one-on-one -on -one conversations with the VIPs. The VIPs generally, because their investment is a lot bigger, are running successful businesses at one thing or another. So you get to have... Um, conversations with them, maybe make new relationships, et cetera. So that's that's the big value of VIP day. And then as a VIP, we're also going to have a VIP dinner, speakers and VIPs um, during the main part of the conference too, where it's just us again. So kind of expand on that relationship stuff. Cool. Awesome. And then the 5th, 6th, and 7th is going to be the general conference. Terry Samuels is going to be our MC. So <laughs> I'm I'm pretty excited about it. I'm freaking, and it's you know I'm I'm I've got to obviously reach out to the speakers like Joy. I don't know her very well. Um, some of the, I mean, obviously I know a lot of them, but yeah, I want to reach out. And I'm, I'm hoping to have some fun with it and you know kind of keep everybody going. You know, um, the first rock stars. It was three days. That it was always. Uh, it was a VIP. I think last year it was three. I don't remember. I have a memory of goldfish. So, um, <laughs> <I'm pretty sure. laughs> I don't know how we came to the decision of three days. So, for those that don't know, Dory is eventually going to be selling SEO Rockstars, SEO Nitro, and SEO Intel to me. And I'll be taking over these businesses, hopefully. Um, the Then this year, the agreement is 50 50 split. Uh, of anything we make, which right now is nothing. Um, and then um, she's going to, you know, teach me about the ins and outs of running a conference because this is the 13th year that she's running SEO Rockstars. And she's always kept it deliberately small. So mm -hmm. when I say 40, 50 people are going to show up, people are like, well, that's not very much. It's like that was her intent all along. She didn't want a whole bunch of people there. She, yeah. You know, so... Um, so this year in that vein, I would prefer, obviously, for <laughs> financial reasons to have more people, but we're also um, down there and we just booked the room for 60 people. So okay. theoretically, I mean, 15, 20 more ticket sales and we're, we're maxed out. 
don't know. Yeah. Which is, I think is good. And it's hard to change your room plans in Vegas, which I've learned. And yeah, and then we got lucky. The room conference room is only three thousand bucks. Okay. Yeah. So. So that's that's a good thing. The couple of downsides of running a conference is making a lot of whole these big old decisions. And Terry knows, and Elizabeth Dethany knows, because we pretend like we're doing stuff, and Elizabeth is actually taking care of spring training, for example. <laughs> um, but conference room, and then the, the meals, and then trying to hopefully get sponsors. We're trying to get uh, Goha Evil to sponsor all the lunches, right? Um, uh, and then um, getting the speakers and wrangling all of them, that was, you know, it was interesting. I had one speaker say yes, and then he ghosted us, so I kicked him out. And the next thing you know, he's, you know, he met, answers his messages. It didn't make any sense to me. So, uh, so that kind of drama. And then on the, on the back end is, do we want to live stream it? And mm -hmm. I was always, I, I was always against live streaming conferences. Like I see the numbers, for example, last year Dory made a hundred thousand dollars from SCR Rockstars. Most of that was selling the recordings. Yeah. Um so if I was if we're just doing it from that perspective, then cool. Uh, sell the recordings. Um if I was doing it on my own, I'd probably get the same guy that you did that created all the stuff for spring training, because he, he was awesome. Uh, and then um, offer the recording straight up front because I've mm -hmm. never been a fan of the old okie doke. Oh, we're never going to do recordings. We're not going to do recordings. And then the old fake email that we all see is, oh, they, Elizabeth Samuels talked to me and she talked to me in the recording. So we're going to do it now. <laughs> no, damn well, I had the full intention to do it all along. So. <laughs> Uh, so we had to work out, work through that, and make some decisions on that as a partnership, which was, you know, that was challenging, but it was, it's been an interesting experience. So, um, for sure. I mean, I, and I, I think, well, last year especially, we had live stream was a challenge, just just because of you know you're dealing with hotel internet, you're dealing with, you know, we actually did it in in three different rooms, um, and so yeah, it was. It was one of the things as far as a stress factor for for me and Elizabeth was those damn live streams. Yeah. <laughs> if you're just recording, you know, yeah. you're just recording. It's just a matter of turning the camera on and off, basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the recording that, was better. Like 2023 for spring training was a, a lot smoother. There was less hiccups, less crazy shit in the last minute. Um the live stream was a lot more challenging. So, and I thought that the recordings that were put together were pretty good because you could still see the PowerPoint. You could see the person on stage. I would say the biggest challenge that year was um, I had some issues with the hotel and then you darn speakers kept walking around. So we're trying to follow you with a camera. <laughs> so yeah, I did, yeah. I'll admit, I do like to walk when I talk. For sure. mm -hmm. All of you guys do, which is just totally fine if I have like a dedicated cameraman to follow you around. But I didn't because, you know, we pointed the camera at stage and nobody stood on stage. <laughs> but, sure. You know, I think I think the biggest thing, though, and there's obviously a lot more conferences now than you know, I think I think us and rock stars three years ago. Well, and SEO at the beach, I think that was it pretty much mm -hmm. for but now, I mean, a lot of people are back in the conference stuff, which is fine. It's I think people just need to realize what these events are for and to have a purpose to go. You know, yeah. if you, you know, if you go just to go and network, that's awesome. You know, but if you go to actually learn something you're struggling with, and you know, I mean, I I used to go to conferences all the time. I'm still going to conferences for agency growth because that's I'm not struggling with that piece. But we there's certain parts of that, especially the front side that we don't do a very good job of, you know, I can't, I can't forecast how many leads I'm going to get per month. I don't have that system in place to do that, even though that's what we do for all of our clients. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I need to do what I, I need to do for myself, what I do for you. And, um, but that's the whole, whole thing about going to these things is that's what we go there for is to talk to people that are doing that successfully. You know? and yeah. How are you doing it? You know, all that stuff. And, 
Um, and then you come away and, you know, the money you spend is, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say it's, it's a minor thing, but now you can get a return on investment in a much quicker way. You know? And like Ted points out that it's, a, it's, that's all training for you. So it's all tax to them. Yeah. Um, totally. I, mean, I think to your point is, you know, rock stars, I see at the beach and I see spring training were networking based conferences versus mm-hmm. funnel hackers, traffic conversions and all those ungagged. You're going there with a thousand plus people. You're not mm-hmm. really. I mean, unless you're a social butterfly, which I definitely am not, then those yeah. conferences I would not get anything out of because they're just so damn big. Yeah. Um, whereas these smaller conferences are good. And then you have other competitors like Chiang Mai. He's got a popular, it's a popular conference. He sells out the tickets a lot, but is it, you know, from everything that I could tell, it's, you know, one, if you're an affiliate or if you're a VA, then Chiang Mai is probably for you. Same with um, Saigon. You're in a VA, then Saigon is probably for you. Um, but these U.S. conferences are really enterprise-level corporate stuff, and I, I think that's where Rockstar Spring Training and uh, SDO at the Beach. I don't know if that's still going to happen next year or not. But yeah. those three know. were, those three were really for the, the community and engagement and actually getting ideas and getting stuff. So yeah, you know, and then you also had the you know the destination type stuff. You know, you guys are back in Vegas this year. Um, which is awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm a Vegas fan anyways. <laughs> I'm a foodie. So we're, what better place to go than Vegas and New Orleans? Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, I just, I think it's cool that you guys went back to Vegas. You were see, you've done Boston, Dallas, Pasadena. Um, gosh, where else? Where were the big, I, I only went, I think Pasadena or the, the one year before Pasadena was my first one, but I did the online. And Pasadena was my first live, or was it? No, it was Vegas. No, Vegas. yeah, it was Vegas because yeah, it was, Vegas. It was Hooters. Mm-hmm. It was Hooters. Yeah, Hooters. Hooters. I think Hooters was my first too. That was my first time I ever speaking. Um, but she's held them in Pasadena, Anaheim. She held them at her ranch. Oh uh, yeah, first, right. first started. Yep. Um, and then she started moving around the country and stuff. I've always wanted her to do one in Florida. It's a good decision yeah. this year. We decided not to. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for sure. You know, prayers to all our Florida friends, by the way. Yeah, for sure. Um, I can't even yeah. imagine. Like, I mean, they're they're they've not even taken a breath from the last hurricane, and they've got another one coming tomorrow. That is crazy. I can't. It's gonna hit the same area, I believe. And then I was watching some uh, videos where we did Thunder Bay, where we did. Where you guys held that mm-hmm. that first? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That area got nailed. So yeah, if you can, right. imagine right. all that sand that was out on the beaches, or is all in their streets now. Yeah, uh, and that and they're coming to get smacked again. So yeah, it's uh, I can't imagine. Um, I don't know. It's as hot as Arizona is. That's kind of really the only thing we have to deal with is the heat. Heat, <laughs> yeah. Which I am definitely ready to be over with. Yeah, oh, 100 percent. We had that nice week. It was <laughs> everyone else going to think I'm crazy, but it was 98 and it was awesome. Oh yeah, uh, for like sure. a whole week, and then it turned jacked up to 110 again. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, I think we're like 12 degrees above normal right now. It's like, yep, yep. Okay, we're done. Stop, please. It's so. too hot, but I mean, yeah. it's better than the alternative. I I don't want any major di- disasters. So. So. No hurricanes, um, no tornadoes, no none of that. <laughs> so how – this is one of the questions I've always had about somebody. We've never – the only event we've done in Vegas was the Mastermind, um, and that was off strip in a house. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how? What was it like trying to find a hotel? That's got to be a daunting task just to even start with. Believe it or not – the people that are responsible for booking those rooms are the hardest people in the hotels to get hold of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For whatever reason. Um, but depending on the hotel, like Caesar's not so easy to deal with. 
uh, and they're crazy expensive and they have all these upsells um, yeah. versus uh, where we're having it, uh, which is at, I want to say it right because I always say it wrong. The plaza. The plaza. Yeah. <laughs> I always say the palms for some reason, but it's the plaza. Um, they were actually really easy to work with. And hey, this is what we're doing. This is what we want. You know, can you hook us up? And they they did it. That's why we got the room. So I know. I think it's how did you how did you find the plaza though? Did you? Uh, I actually <laughs> was looking around and I wanted to do different hotels because she's always been on that one side of the strip, which is mm-hmm. fine if you like that one side of the strip, but you miss out on everything that's going on on Fremont and all that because yeah. walking and all that. So I was just looking around and I really I came up with the plaza, uh, but I really wanted Green Valley Ranch. Okay. Uh, which is totally, which is off the strip. Yeah. Uh, and it's like a, it is a casino. It's in a really cool spot, but it's away from everything that you would normally go to Vegas. See, you see something new. That's what I was my thinking, but green Valley was crazy expensive. And Dory was like, look at the rooms, the rooms back when we booked the hotel at the plaza were 80, 87 bucks, 30, no 37 to 87 was the range. The rooms when we were looking at Green Valley were already at two fifty, so we we're like, "Oh, well, wow. I can't do that." <laughs> well, and, that, and that's something you really have to pay attention to as conference hosts. That's something that one of the reasons why spring training this year is in Chandler's because we're saving thirty five percent on rooms by getting out of Scottsdale. Getting out of Scottsdale, yeah. So you know that's something that we have to take into account. Of you know, it's <laughs> it's not just the price of a ticket; it's the whole package. That, you know, you got to pay attention to. So let's Boston, you know, Boston was crazy last year because of the price of the rooms back there. Yeah. You know, and that was, that was nuts. So Yeah, that was, it was rough. That, that one was rough. Um, I, I get it though. I mean, if you look at these trips, it's not like you're spending, Oh, I'm going to spend say $1,500 on a ticket to go to go to this conference. And then you, mm-hmm. Then you realize, oh shit! Now I got to fly there, so there's five hundred bucks, and then I got to get the rooms. There's another grand, and then I'm going to eat. So there's, you know, depending on how much you eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're eating Terry when he's he's a, he's eating in the Terry will buy you food. But <laughs> there are some hacks. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Elizabeth, Elizabeth loves that when he does that. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. I love it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, yeah, I'm, so I'm cognizant of that. Uh, I think that's um, probably one of the things that I would work work on if, if and when I do take over this business finally uh, is balancing the the ticket prices and stuff, and, and probably changes some of the way things are done. Like I like VIP day. VIP day is awesome, but. Mm-hmm. You guys don't have VIP day for spring training, and and you provide a VIP experience for everybody, um, or at least you know compared to a whole lot of other conferences, you would call it a VIP experience for sure. So, I probably would eliminate VIP day altogether. Uh, maybe do the VIP, keep the VIP dinner. You guys did that that one year, yeah, um, and then put more into the old general ticket thing, increasing the value for everybody, and then maybe reduce prices a little bit to to make it better. Um, but the, that's easy to say. I never want to compete. I've never been one who wants to compete on pricing because yeah, you're always sure. jacked up by somebody, right? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but at least we can get some value out of it, I think. Well, and I think I think that's the big thing is the general admission ticket has to be the one that's, you know, that's the one that's going to sell the most, obviously. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, but believe it or not, this year VIP is sold the most. Yeah, um, for sure. I don't know. Why. But we have the yeah, we have the VIP, and then we have the Tech Day, yeah. uh, or Tech Mastermind, which we're going to kind of uh, mix up a little bit this year. Um, and we're going. We're actually going back to a two-day conference. So, um, I just, you know, I did the, the the third day for me was always let's do something different the third day. Yeah, you know, something 
you know, like more networking based type of thing. Like my idea, I want to do New Orleans mastermind again. And it's basically two speakers and let's go network. Let's go take advantage of the, one of the things that we never get to take advantage of is the location we go to like Boston. I never got to see downtown Boston and go to cheers and all the stuff that I've always wanted to quasi go see in Boston. And the same thing happens, you know, when we were, went to Orlando and, you know, we just fly in and we go to the conference for three or four days. We fly out. It's like, dang it. <laughs> you know? so, but um, so I'm, we're trying to, at least on our side, we're trying to figure out if we do do more of a destination style thing is what can we do with the destination? Not just having a bunch of people in a room for two or three days. You know? Yeah. So, um, but I think, you know, but I think you have to continually look at, you know, just like you do, you guys do a different spot every year, which, I've always told Dory she's crazy, but um, but I, I I respect that she did. But it's just I think you know now we just need to pay attention to, you know, what else can we do that's kind of not not really different, but something people haven't experienced yet, kind of thing. Yeah, I you mean, know. yeah, when you guys offered New Orleans, I was all excited about that one. Mm -hmm. and then, do the circumstances you had to change the dates and that kind of jacked me up so yeah if you do that again i'd be all in for that one for sure yeah, yeah definitely. so so are you gonna um <clears throat> now do you go up and because dory has a whole bunch of equipment she travels with so is she is, do you have that equipment or is she bringing the equipment to vegas and then how's your setup i've always again setting up in a different location every year yeah you know we have a storeroom and we just bring everything from the storeroom to whatever hotel we pick locally. So, yeah. Well, really at the end of the day for Dory's conference, it's on, how do you do the live stream? So you need a camera and mics and then mics so everyone can see and then a slide projector. And I think she's got most of that stuff already from pre-investment. So, okay. um, so we're, we're, we'll be good there. I on I honestly if I do it I'm probably gonna do a hybrid of it I'm never gonna do a live stream I mm -hmm. come or by the recordings is kind of how I feel about it only because all the nightmares that I've seen Dory go through and you guys go through yeah. last year spring training that sealed it for me when they hacked your website for no damn reason oh, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a freaking nightmare yeah I was like. <laughs> Not doing the recordings. I, it sucks. You can't come. I get it. It's expensive. You don't want to fly overseas or whatever. But just wait for the recordings. <laughs> I'm going to do it. So, um, and doing that, we don't have to have so much equipment, really. So, and then well, we, talk we really talk don't do all those about, um, So, talk to me a little bit about. Hold on, I'm trying to find. The, what's the what's the URL? SEORockstars.net. .net. Okay, so the .us is gone? <clears throat> yeah, I got rid of it. Because she did that conference competition. Remember that? Yep. <clears throat> and everyone ruined the brand. So I got rid of it. Okay. I had a good backlink from there. Um, <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about um, how you kind of went about getting the speakers and seeing who you wanted to come and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. So... Um, you were obvious, yeah. no-brainer. You were the easiest one to find, uh, to be honest. And then um, I saw James Slattery and Brian Wynnum speak at uh, SEO at the Beach, and I was blown away with those guys. I I knew of them, but I never had a really good conversations with them. <clears throat> James and I have – I think we're – you know, we're not besties or anything, but we've grown a lot closer, and he reaches out and checks on us all the time and stuff, so it's really cool of him. Uh, so he was yes. definitely a no-brainer. Uh, Brian Wynnum, he's coming. He's got a authority website system that uh, as soon as I take over SEO Nitro, if and when I take that over, we're going to implement on the cross that entire network. And he's got the whole training and everything, so I'm just going to buy his training and send all the, the Nitro people through it and do that to the sites. Um so, and anyone will be valued from even just hearing his idea and content generation is going to be awesome. Yeah. Cato, uh, obvious choice. I mean, everyone's still, you know, Sheets and AI and Brian Cato's in there with that. So 
and he does the research and he's a super nerd, so why not have him? Uh, Dan, Dan Kurtz, not very well known around the world, uh, mm -hmm. as it were, but when you're done having listening to Dan talk, you're gonna be like, holy crap, things you can do. He's just doing with make or impressive. I mean, there's plenty of people on YouTube talking about making stuff, but he's writing books with make and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, and then he's got access to some stuff that I haven't seen anyone ever talk about in regards to PPC stuff. I send um, my PPC leads to him uh, just because he can do some things that I definitely can't and I don't want to do PPC. So. <laughs> right on. Uh, Brock's coming again. Uh, looking forward to he seeing and hearing him. Uh, he's going through some drama right now uh, on his own Facebook page. Um, but at the end of the day, he's, uh, my experience, my dealing with him is a good dude. Uh, so we're bringing him uh, Derek Pierce. Derek has been invited to SCR Rockstars for like the last 10 years. And he uh, always said no. And he has, um, and he's public about this. So I'm not giving away his business. He's, he's got a phobia of flying and he's really nervous with crowds and all that stuff. Think of like a super hyped up PTSD for uh, lack of a better description. Uh, and he finally, we got him, I finally got him to come. I saw him at SEO at the beach. It was close to him. It was easy to travel. And I saw him there and I talked him into coming to Rockstars. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's going to probably talk uh, about some AI stuff. Um, but the full agenda is on, on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Schwartzman, I don't know. Many people know him. He is a published author. Uh, he's in uh, the public relations space and he's bringing over his public relations experience to getting leads. So think. Um, was that agency Fat Joe where they're creating infographics and statistics and then sending it out to journalists. Eric's been doing that for ages uh, and he's going to come talk to us about that. Cool. Uh, Gregory Ortiz, OMG style, he's coming. Uh, he's going to be doing some agency stuff. Randy's going to come and talk about press releases. Joy Hawkins, you mentioned. Um, I was just throwing darts on the wall. Um, because I wanted to get some of those enterprise super white hat um, people from SEO Twitter. That's really where I follow follow Joy um, to the conference, and she surprisingly she said yes, and she's going to do some stuff about. Uh, she runs a very successful agency. She's got a U.S. agency, thirty eight people, uh, and if you know how about paying people, thirty eight people is no small number for a digital marketing agency. Mm -hmm. uh, she's bringing her lessons learned from the clients she lost, uh, which I think is awesome. Um, Richard Fong's coming. Uh, he's got a really cool mastermind. Some great people are in that. Um, I get invited every once in a while and then I say, yeah. And then I'm like, well, I don't know if I want to talk about these to these guys. Right. So it kind of puts out, um, but Rich yeah, I've, been to, I've been trying to weasel into that group for a couple of years now. Yeah. And, and so I, yeah. So I got him to speak and everyone talks really highly of him. So I'm looking forward to hearing you say, uh, Jerry West been, I've been following him since my network marketing days and I met him at a no excuses summit in Vegas uh, and I've been enamored by SEO and the idea of PBNs and all that ever since uh, so I really attribute my SEO career to Jerry West because I was at the time I was paying like 3,000 bucks for leads every month um, and Jerry was like you guys are all idiots why aren't you doing SEO and, like he talks to you that way <laughs> yeah. You need the tough love. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So Jerry's going to be coming. He's going to be talking. He's He's got a set of test sites. He's really, before Kyle Roof, Jerry West was the guy that I knew that was actually doing testing. Um, and he's got uh, 900 domains. I think the copy says 700, but it's actually 900 domains that he does testing on and then um, <clears throat> and runs businesses off of that. So he's Really smart dude, and look forward to seeing uh, him again. Uh, Derek is Wozniak. You guys know him. Mm -hmm. Smart, 
He's been to our events, I think. Yep. And he's really underground. Um, if you're an ONG, you know Derek. Derek is the guy that was doing all the ranking for Cotton Grammar. So everything Cotton Grammar said, oh, we rank for this, we rank for that. Yeah, that was all Derek. Um, he's mm-hmm. humble and he says, oh, it wasn't entirely all me, but it was all Derek. Um, so he's, <laughs> he's coming. Uh, Mike Merlino, I had, you got to bring Mike to a conference if you want to wake people up. So that's what I, I, I brought Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay he does have valuable stuff to offer other than being emphatic and loud yeah, yeah. but that's really why i brought him okay. <laughs> and he's going to go on uh talking with branding i think his branding is really important now if you've listened to any of the old um the stuff that's going around now about brand authority is important and that's how you beat um yep. htu i don't know if this is necessarily true but he applies it to maps and he's been applying it since long before HCU and he's been successful with it. So he's going to come and talk to us about branding. Uh, we got Elias out of Greece. He's coming to talk about Neo. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Stuart Vickers, <laughs> the SEO Jesus. He got the name because it literally looks and dresses like Jesus sometimes. So, yeah. Um, he's coming, uh, talking about um, some affiliate stuff. Adam and Chizzy is coming. He's would be a, be a good um, layer with Merlino on branding. Marty Marion, he's coming to talk about heuristics. It sounds technical and, and craziness, but Marty explains this stuff, and he's old school marketer. So all of us are SEOs. It is a form of marketing. Marty is an old school marketer. So I think Mad Men, and that's Marty. Uh, that's what he brings to the table so he's kind of mixing those two worlds together uh, and it's uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him again and then old Ted Kibitis he's bringing some SEO testing stuff Um, I have to look at the agenda I didn't memorize it but I did do it and I think I got Ted opening up the conference Uh, so day one is you get the SEO stuff you're looking for right off the bat with uh, Ted's testing stuff Exactly. And then I mixed in the clients, maps, and stuff and kind of made it so you're not, you know, like how we made the mistake of having all the agency guys speak for one day and that put everyone to sleep. So I was cognizant of that and mixed that in pretty good. Um, and there's not a lot of rah, 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 you know, niche down and get leads in the same thing over and over again crap that we've all been hearing over and over again. Now. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, no, I mean, everything that I love the way you set out the agenda for sure. Yeah. So that's always the, you know, I have three, I have three people, you and Cato and freaking Chad helping me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like doing this stuff on my own because it's like, I get, hey, yeah, can, can I go last on Tuesday? And, uh, yeah. I mean, when you're just thinking about the agenda, that's, it's not necessarily hard. You just, the hard part is getting the, hey, Speaker, what the hell are you talking about? Right. Exactly. Sure. Um, and then putting that together. But as you guys know, when you're running a conference, you got to build a website to convert. So now we got to figure out web design stuff. We have two different sales letters that essentially say the same thing that are on two different designs. You get the emails. Uh, so that's the one that Dory did. And, I, and then I have mine. Um, and mine is I literally went to the big um, conferences and I was like, what are they doing uh, in regards to web design for conversions? Because obviously they got a shit ton of people coming, so must be doing something right. And we just kind of hybrided those, and that's how I came up with my version of the homepage. And then it took a little bit of Dory stuff and et cetera, and it actually... Honestly, truthfully, I think it converts really well. Um, Dory blames it the email results, and I'm being I'm front front everyone because you guys all got to learn if you want to do this shit. Um, Dory did when she did the emails and sent it to the page. It didn't it, we got some sales, but it didn't convert in regards to what she was expecting. So she redid it, and there's that other version of the page that you get if you're on my email list. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was no difference in the conversion. So um, I think I even might 
play around next year with having a landing page, a set of them. Um, yeah, for sure. And I do. I do like the logo. Play it out ugly to 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 beautiful and see how it goes. <laughs> I think I do like the logo better this year. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, I changed that and didn't tell her until it was up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like it a lot better. It's, it well, it stands out now. So, you know, I think it's awesome. Yeah, stands out. Um, it took me a little bit messing with it, and then we have a really good uh, graphics uh, person. She's not Elizabeth Daniels good, but she's pretty good uh, working yeah. for us, and she knocked that out uh, for me. And then we put it up, and then they gave it to Dory. So she was kind of okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Oh, you got Jeff Lenny coming, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I missed him. I didn't have him on the page yet. Um, but yeah, he's coming, uh, talking about affiliate stuff. Cool. Right on. So yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's well, not really funny because it's the shuffling we have to do with the speakers as it gets closer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easier when they they give you a heads up. Adam, he he's he's actually going from a. I think he's doing a birthday party to a conference to to rock stars and then straight to another conference. And so he gave me the heads up so I can give him a good day so he can have some time where For sure. he's yeah. not struggling. Um, exactly. Yeah, but as you know, so far that, that's that been the hardest thing was getting the speakers. And what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And that, that's always the hardest thing. And it's... I don't think we've ever anybody's come up with a magic way except for like you know you're the first one I've seen fire people. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think you have to get that way. You're like, look, you have until this date, or you're not speaking. That's yeah. the bottom line. And you know, and I think people need to speakers need to be. I mean, if you want to speak, you know, I've even now Elizabeth built me this little package I just send to people that has you know an image, a bio, and then different topics and. Some some conferences will tell me what they want me to speak at, and you know. But I, I do think it's chasing chasing people is the most frustrating thing, especially when you're trying to announce stuff and get stuff promoted. Yeah, I you know from uh, the speaker side of it, it's we tend or we can tend to lean to the idea of, oh, you want me speaking at your conference because I'm so important. <laughs> and then, oh, you, you got to cater to me? Well, that's honestly, it's, there is a little bit of that. I mean, just hypothetical, if I invite Terry Samuel to speak at Rockstars, it's probably because he's got a good list and he talks and he's got a good audience and he's probably going to, you know, promote it to his his group and i can tell you that happens zero percent of the time you know that's, that's a big thing like i always perceive that like okay if you're coming to the event you should i mean even if you get two or three people from your entire following or group we could like blow the doors off yeah if yeah but they don't do it the only person that's done it uh, and I'm not bashing the other speakers. I'm just saying, the only person that's done it this year is Jerry, and he mm -hmm. promoted it right off the bat before we even turned on the affiliate thing. So he, set, he's got a, he did sell a couple tickets. Um, Brian just signed up for the affiliate thing. Simon White is promoting it for us, um, but Simon's not even speaking. Uh, so yeah. Simon, Simon's just awesome. So. Yeah. Um, so back to the speakers and the selection is, you know, I even fell into that trap. Oh, look how good I am. And, you know, Dory, I mean, speaker, rock stars. No, I'm famous, right? And so um, kind of had the entitlement thing going on, um, and it doesn't – it's not really helpful. Uh, and I had to change the perspective. Is like, I mean, I don't really have this super big, I'm going to fill rock stars audience. And so mm -hmm. – Harry invites me to speak at spring training or invites me to MC. That's an opportunity to get me out in front of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and if speakers will look at it in that perspective and think about that and then make it easier for um, conference hosts to actually get you out in front of people, uh, you probably get invited to more stuff. <laughs> um, just put Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, um, I, I purposely waited until the last 30 days this time. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I've done it sporadically here and there, but um, I like the 30 day push, um, especially when, you know, I, I don't see anybody else doing it very often. Mm-hmm. Well, and also so many people wait till the last minute anyway, you know, so. Yeah. You, you, you catch a lot more the last 30 days than you do six months out. Well, and it's, and it's cool that you only need like 20 to fill the room instead of like 80. Yeah. <laughs> like we were 30, 30 days out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He yeah. has room for spring training and I was getting, you were making me worried. I, like, I never saw any of the numbers, but you were making me worried. I was like, Oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah. last, last year we, we, we learned from our mistakes last year for sure. So, um, and this year we're, you know, I mean, this year we're going way out of our network, um, even kind of hiring people to get this out to, I mean, there's tons of SEO people outside of our network that don't mm-hmm. even know about spring training or rock stars or any of these, you know, they're just in their own little bubble and they don't really hang out at, you know, SEO signals lab and stuff like that. And yeah. So yeah. Um, I've always been trying to figure out how to network outside. So I've been doing it local groups and, you know, like I got a Gilbert group that I announced it in when they announced the small business Saturday. I always talk about the conference, and, you know, that type of thing. So, mm-hmm. but, you know, but I think that's the hardest thing is, you know, especially the speaker thing, you know, that'd be great if you, you know, and I have, I've been offered to speak and they specifically said that I have to have a, a minimum of a 5,000 people database that I can market to for them. You know, and I was like, wow, that's, it's actually pretty cool, but they're also online and their market shares like 20,000 people when they do their, their little Mm -hmm. conferences, their digital conferences. But, um, and these aren't SEO conferences, they're just topical conferences, but, um, you know, but I just thought that was pretty interesting. And I said, well, I'd be honest with you. I don't have 5,000 people in my database. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Which we probably are close to that, but. Even yeah, still, it'd be after the digital agency scrape. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, we're probably you know, except if you guys ever want to do cold email stuff, because um, I'm I'm in and out of part, and the leads that we got from LinkedIn, uh, we bought them specifically from List Kit, which is essentially they just hot jacked into LinkedIn. Um, those leads kind of suck. Um, mm-hmm. So we used Outscraper, and that's how we we built. Uh, I built my cold email thing, and before right. I put stories list in there, I was at seventy six percent open rate. Um, so definitely something for you guys to consider if you want to. Yeah, you know. we. I, I I love cold email. That's how I started. I think that's how most of us started. I wasn't mm-hmm. a phone call guy, so I would go to twenty church websites every single day, and I'd cold email their contact forms and. You know, that's how I started, just freaking, you know, doing that. And yeah. So I, I think it's a lot now with, with high level and these other tools, you know, that can help you do that stuff better. Chat GPT is awesome at writing, you know, three or four or five stage email scripts. Cool. <laughs> so, well, the one know. that you're getting from, from my system, because you got it imported, is that's all Chat GPT. Mm-hmm. And I, I essentially just gave it the rules from Auto Responder Madness, and if you ever followed him, Andre something, uh, and his he does. That's how when he does sequences, he he creates seven interconnected emails, and that's okay. how I had ChatGPT write those essentially Auto Responder Madness style. So, right on. That's cool. Yeah. So are you, are you going after certain niches in your email campaigns or what are you doing as far? And you're doing this for digital ear, right? Uh, well, digital ear I'm playing around with because I'm actually going to do two things at the same time. I'm going to do, um, well, one, I'm going to scrape and then two, I'm going to do content lists, content boxes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to, going to hit those at the same time as doing the email. So it's going to come in in all three directions or two directions. Uh, and then if they're really good, they'll actually start seeing me in their Google analytics because I'll be setting that up as a referrer and do, doing little mini audits. And that shows that digital ear will show up in your, ref, in their referral box. Uh, if you set that properly, uh, in, um, you can do it in Sightbulb. You can do it with Core if you want to. Core is longer, um, and then so that 
that'll be three touches. And then if depending on how that goes, then I'll probably I'm gonna start doing postcards too. Right on. Cool. Yeah, are you using are you using, using like Dan's pixel or any of the pixels out there to no, no, no. I mean, it, you you got you tested it for for spring training and it did okay. You built a decent list. Um, my lawyers are doing okay with it. They're they're happy with it. Um, but you know, as anything, I wish it could be better. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. sure. It was just it's honestly it's just cheaper to just scrape the sites and use Outscraper and scrape the emails and then do it that way than building that active list. I, I mean, yeah, theoretically, I could plug in AdWords to the site and do remarketing to you. But yeah, we got we're playing with Brian Hongs too. He's got a pretty cool one. So, uh, yeah, Mister, I think he's he's the only one that's ever been to every rock star. Yeah, yeah. But Dory had to give him a free ticket this year. This is <laughs> lucky number thirteen. Have any talk on when you guys are thinking about next year's rock stars, or just you guys don't think that far in advance, one at a time? Yeah, it's it's one at a time. Uh, it it really depends how this transition goes. If I take over the business and stuff, and then I thought of a couple of options. One is just go back up in the Phoenix metro area. You have spring training your rock stars in the same place because um, we're you know our we're all so close anyway. It just kind of makes sense to do them both up there and. You have spring and fall, and you're good now. You got everything covered, right? <clears throat> um, and then the other idea, as I had, was you know, as you mentioned, bouncing around is kind of do want to bounce around a little bit. Do one in New York City, do one in Boulder. Um, there's a big community in Denver, maybe Austin, if I can get over the ick of going to a Democrat city um, <laughs> in Texas. I went to Austin, I went early, so. Yeah. <laughs> Um, We've been, I've been asked a couple times to do one in Canada. So like up in Banff, something up there. Banff would be awesome. Um, So obviously it'd be a, you know, you won't get a general emission for 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, I think it'd be 500 bucks in Banff. (laughs) Yeah. And then maybe, maybe we do the SEO spring training rock stars cruise. (laughs) <laughs> nice. Uh, I also thought about that because they had that marketers cruise um, that Mike Phil Same did. Um, I mentioned it one time, and someone said he was still doing it, but I could never find any reference to it. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it for sure. It's not yeah. on Facebook anywhere. If they're doing it, I can't imagine the logistics of that, though. Like, obviously, you're not going to want to choose like a Disney cruise with kids and stuff. So you yeah. want to go to an adult cruise and then if you look at the prices of cabins those are not cheap at all and then you're going to be doing a conference so you're going to ask for a part of the ship and I can't have, that's got to be damn near it's got to be expensive well I think I think obviously you need to look at the smaller boats mm-hmm. maybe uh, you know, one of the 20, 30, 40 people boats, like a Mississippi River cruise. Like a day cruise. Um, no, it'd be more than a day. Like, it, there's Mississippi River cruises, I think, they are like three or four days. Yeah. A little long. <laughs> but, I, um, yeah, I don't know how it would work on a 7,000 people cruise by any means. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I I just, like, do, you know, you know so. I'd also want to do a conference in Europe. Yeah. You're a be be you're a be cool. Um, yeah. Kim wants to go to Ireland, Ireland, so yeah, so I, I, Ireland would be awesome. Then I can go Ireland. golfing. Yeah, but yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, no, I think it'd be you know I think figuring out destination type stuff. Um, again, I think I like your size cruise for or your size conferences for the travel conferences. I think it'd be hard to do with a two hundred people conference. Yeah, from play at least. You'd be paying so much money for outside AV and video. People have no idea how much AV and video costs. Yeah, they get you good. It's nuts, especially if you don't have any. We we're pretty good with spring training because we have most of our own. But you know, if you're relying on the hotel, that could be twenty grand just right there. Yeah, audio video stuff. So um, then that's one of the things you got to look at when you're doing the traveling roadshow type of thing. So. 
Yeah, it's it harder to, to do. Like Elizabeth found that taco truck for that one. Mm-hmm. Thunder Bay, and that was awesome. Um, but you know, Vegas, they're like, you know, get your food out of here. You're paying us for food and lunches, <laughs> sixty five hundred dollars. You're like, uh, I don't know if I really want to provide you guys lunch. <laughs> <laughs> sixty five hundred per lunch, yeah. not. Not total, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year was beyond crazy with what we spent on the event. So we're we're looking at doing things a little differently, but I don't want to sacrifice because you know we always do provide lunches and we cover speaker rooms and you know we do a really nice welcome reception because you know we want to make sure people really feel that they get a lot of value out of it. So, well, you guys take a lot of front end risk too. And you mm-hmm. guys know me, I'm cheap. And Dory's probably cheaper than I am, so we're not doing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, you, you get what yeah. the ticket prices pay for it. You know, we're not trying to make a gajillion dollars, but come on. <laughs> we're not. Well, I think, yeah, I think we're not like taking last, out, What did you take out last time? It was a $30,000 loan? Yeah. Yeah. No, that ain't happening. Yeah, yeah I'd, be, so. I'd be beside myself right now in the corner sucking my thumb if I had <laughs> well, that's that's what I mean. A month out, I was you know I was having to take a drive every day and listen to Joe Dispenza just so I could function. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just you know, but it's it is a lot of risk and it is a lot of you know. I mean, I I mean the only the only year we really really made any money was the digital when we did it with COVID. Mm-hmm. Which is digital. That's you know. Um, that was more of a blessing than a curse, obviously, at least for us on the conference side. But I think, I think every year, like I said, it gets, that's one reason we had to get out of Scottsdale. It, it was getting more and more, more expensive. And when you look at the conference on a whole, you know, 350 a night for a hotel, isn't something you can sell a lot of general admission tickets for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> so that was the first thing that we looked at. And that's why it took us a little bit longer this year to come to terms with the hotel because room cost was was the big key, you know, and and, and the room block. I didn't want to get stuck with eighty freaking rooms per night. You know, per night, so um, it's just all this crap. People don't realize that you have to go through when you plan these things. You know? yeah. And then, and now we're at a, you know, last year we dealt with the Hilton, which Hilton's not bad, but the um, Double Tree side is that Double Tree? Yeah. That's the double tree side was hard to deal with. So um, this one we're in a, I think it's a crown. It's crown Plaza and it's yeah. owned by Marriott. Yeah. And it seems to be so, so right in downtown Chandler, there's like 40 restaurants and bar right around the, right around the walking distance. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, the reason why we did that is just to save us and the, and everybody money. Yeah. You know, get them out of Scottsdale, you know. Scottsdale's not suffering by any means, so they're not. <laughs> there's no competition for prices in Scottsdale. <laughs> <laughs> One bedroom house in Scottsdale is like a million bucks, so no, they're all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the it. plaza, right? So if the plaza, the plaza is that's 6,500 for a lunch, um, which is a lot. And then if we just don't have to take it sales and we can't buy everyone lunches, well, guess what? The plaza is right across the road from Friedmont Street. Or, you know, you, and there's all kinds of restaurants and everything are right there. Um, so yeah. it's it's not the end of the world. It's not going to hurt the the value of the experience. Uh, no, I don't think so at all. Especially, you know, the good thing is, is you're you are close to restaurants. Pasadena was a little bit of a pain in the ass when you had to yeah. go when you had to go try to find lunch. And yeah, In and Out Burger took you you know 20 minutes to get to, and you only had an hour to. <laughs> so but yeah as long as you know keeping stuff close by that people can go do you know one of the things that we're not going to do a lot of this year is elizabeth really tries to cater to different diets and that's you're talking over 100 150 people that's a pain yeah you know hey yeah, what point you it's, scale, it's not scalable to do that yeah so it might sound better to go out and eat your own Find your own place that has your kind of food, mm-hmm. whatever. But anyway, so I'm super excited about Vegas. 
Um, looking forward to, you know, send me some of your email scripts. I talked to you about that before. Um, Cause we're going to start to do it, promote it to our email list. Um, I will say one thing, Elizabeth will probably kill me right now, but anybody that buys a ticket and mentions this podcast, what? Right next what? Time, I'll give you a free general admission ticket. What? <laughs> Dude. So I'll do a one. No, two, sir. Two, two, one. No. Somebody mute him. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> no, no, no. And then, yeah, I'll give you a free general admission. To no, us. sir. So, but if you need to upgrade, you got to do your own upgrade. So, <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to seeing you again, of course. Let us know. Reach out if there's anything, any help you need about the conference or whatever. Um, I think we're coming in Sunday. We're driving in Sunday. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, um, I want to do the VIP thing. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, and then you have obviously Skylar and Brandon as your little gophers if you need them. Yeah, I told Dory about that. She's excited. Set up, boys. So <laughs> we need to get in the staff T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, lime green staff. Pink. Pink. <laughs> yeah. That'd be better. Yeah, Pepto Bismol pink. So. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for joining us, everybody. You know, like and share and do all the stuff that we ask you to do to help us grow. Um, Clint, it's been a super pleasure. I can't wait to see you again in about three and a half weeks. Um, but reach out to us if you guys need anything at all. So thank you, everybody.